Hi everyone and welcome to week number two of our year-long walk through the whole New Testament. Today we're uh, taking a look at uh, Mark again, chapters three and four this week, Mark three and four. And uh, I'm kind of thinking about uh, time back in the spring of 2019. I was joined by a great group of folks from Gloria Day. We went to the Holy Land and one day we were able to take a boat ride uh, out on the Sea of Galilee, which is actually just a big lake. But Jesus did a lot of his ministry in and around this lake, this Sea of Galilee. And uh, while we were there uh, on that boat, I was kind of picturing Jesus uh, saying to his disciples, from now on, instead of fishing for fish, you're going to fish for people. And I thought of Jesus kind of on the hillside that was overlooking uh, the Sea of Galilee, preaching the Sermon on the Mount from what is now called the Mount of Beatitudes, right there next to the Sea of Galilee. Um, I pictured Jesus walking on that water. That's where Jesus walked on the water, and it was where he, he uh, gave an invitation to Peter to come out onto the water to walk as well. And I also thought of uh, a text that's uh, an episode that's found in Mark chapter 4 where Jesus stills the storm. It, is, it takes place right there on the Sea of Galilee. And his calming and stilling the storm I like to think about in Mark chapter 4 as a metaphor for the life of a disciple or the life of a follower of Jesus. But before we get to that, I want to, uh, to have you take a look real quickly at Mark chapter 3. Uh, where Jesus calls his 12 disciples. It starts in verse 13. Verses 13 through 19 of Mark 3, Jesus calls his inner circle, uh, these 12 disciples that Jesus spends about three years teaching them, mentoring them, showing them, modeling for them what this kingdom of God is all about. And there were others too, many other followers of Jesus that heard his teaching. But these 12 were kind of the inner circle, the 12 uh, disciples. And in this text, uh, Mark gives us the names of all 12 disciples. I want you to read through it when you have a chance and to read it out loud so that you can read all of the names of the 12 disciples. And I think Mark includes them here uh, for a few reasons. Number one, just so that we know who they are. It's important for us to know who those disciples were and some of them are more well known than others, Peter, James, and John, and others. But, uh, uh, but I think secondly, he puts the names of the disciples and lists them so that you and I would include our names as well. So as you read through this, and you read it out loud in verses 13 through 19 of Mark 3, read the names aloud, but then put your name. Say your first name, say your middle name, say your last name, so that you can know that you too are a disciple of Jesus. And that brings me into chapter 4, this great episode of Jesus stilling the storm. There's a lot in uh, chapters 3 and 4. Early in chapter 4, uh, Jesus tells the great parable of the sower and the seed, and he talks about the seed falling on different types of soil. I want you to read through that early in chapter 4 and think about the good soil. Jesus says near the end of that, and then as he explains it uh, later in the, in the reading, uh, he says that the ones that are sown on good soil, they're the ones who hear the word. That's what you're doing. You're hearing it. You're reading it. You're learning it. And uh, then those are the ones who uh, hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. And that's really our calling as people in the, in the uh, kingdom of God, to hear the word, to bear fruit. But I want to focus today more on chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, 35 through 41. And that is the calming of the storm. Jesus names the 12 disciples, your name's included in that, so are mine. And as we look at chapter 4, verses 35 to 41, we get a metaphor for what a life of a disciple is all about. Jesus is inviting them. Look at verse 35, for example. It says, On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let's go across to the other side. Jesus invites them into the boat. 
He invites you into a life of discipleship. He invites me into this boat ride of discipleship. And what happens? A big storm comes up. And so Jesus is saying in our lives, in following Jesus, it's not always going to be clear sailing. There are going to be storms that arise. And the disciples get afraid. Jesus is there. He's sleeping. It's been a long day. And they wake him up and they say, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? It was a big storm. They were worried about going overboard and drowning. And Jesus says, yes, I do care. I do care. And he calms the storm. He says, peace, be still. And so in your life as a disciple, there's going to be storms, but Jesus is right there in the boat with you. And when you ask that question, Jesus, I've gone through this suffering or somebody in my life is suffering, don't you care? His presence says to you loudly and clearly, yes, I do care. I love you. And I'm the one who can bring about peace even in the midst of storms. And then finally, at the end of that parable, or at the end of that account, it's not a parable, it's an actual event. At the end of that event, uh, the disciples kind of look at each other and they say, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? They know that the only one who can have control over the wind and the waves uh, is God himself goes back to last week, the identity of Jesus. This is God in the flesh, that the wind and the waves obey him. So I want you to see that as a metaphor for your life. Jesus, in the midst of your fear, in the midst of your storms, he's the one who can bring peace, and he does. If you read Psalm 89 or Psalm 107, you're going to see that God is the one who has control over the wind and the waves. He has control over the challenges in your life. So he invites you into a life of discipleship. He's with you always. He brings you peace. And that is good news. God is with you, God loves you, and God is right at your side. Mark chapters 3 and 4. All kinds of things in there, but happy reading. God is good all the time. See you next week.